Hi, I'm Tony. I'm an author, presenter at Sky Sports, and years ago I went to the jungle and got ill. Very <laughs> ill. So this is my podcast adventure to find more energy. It's packed with biohacking, science, health tech, supplements, and some of the most well-known experts on the planet. This is something I spent four months of my life doing with electrodes glued to my head so that you can do a lifetime worth of meditation. Decide what you don't give a f about, which is something you don't care about. Some of it gets quite out there. I had some stem cells sent up to my house that I had stored, and then I injected myself with mannitol. And we even hack hangovers. Alcohol is poisonous. So is water and oxygen in the wrong dosage. So that's my podcast, Zestology. Live life with energy, vitality, and motivation. Welcome back to Zestology. I'm Tony Wright, and it's such a windy day. It's a sort of big storm in the UK at the moment that I was walking down by the river, but it's just going to sound too windy on this podcast. So I've had to come to the back streets behind the Thames. And this podcast is all about longevity and living well. Dr. Tamsin Lewis is a friend of Zestology. She's been on before, and she's a real expert in the space of longevity, biohacking, and health. She's also been forced to become an expert in long COVID as she suffered from it herself. She is currently, as you will hear, in Ibiza, which is probably a little bit less windy and a little bit warmer than West London right now, um, at her longevity clinic, which she has set up over the last year or so. And I first met her at the Biohacking Summit in uh, LA in 2017, and as a very highly qualified medical doctor who's also into biohacking, um, I think we originally met because we were both chatting to, it was her, me and Dave Asprey, and we were all chatting together about longevity and that's how we got to know each other. So I rate Dr. Tam very highly indeed. She's at times outspoken, she's at times provocative and very thought provoking in everything that she does. So I think you're gonna find it very useful. Here she is, Dr. Tamsin Lewis. Dr. Tam, welcome back to Zestology. So nice to see you again. Yeah, it's nice to see you too. It feels like a feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, it doesn't, if you know what I mean. You know, so much has happened, yet, you know. Well, we this still is, know each other. <laughs> I know. This is a reunion of sorts, isn't it? I think we first spoke, God, back in 2015, 2016, something like that. And you've mm. had such a roller coaster over the last couple of years. People mostly listen to this podcast, but they will, if they go to the website, be able to see you with the beautiful Ibiza sea behind you and it's <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of dark winter here. I'm not going to lie I'm, I'm pretty, pretty yeah. jealous of that that looks that looks amazing but you've had such a roller coaster time of it over the last year and a half so we've got a lot to talk about but tell us just bring us up to date with everything that's happened. Yeah I guess I guess where to start yeah you said like I am I'm in Ibiza at the moment I'm helping set up a longevity center called Rose Bar at the Six Senses which is very cool lots of biohacking oh. goodies going on. Oh amazing I, I, I literally want to come I mean like, yeah. I haven't told you that we've been chatting for 20 minutes or so but we're coming that sounds amazing. Yeah I and mean, you know couldn't, couldn't think of anything better to have an IV overlooking the oh. overlooking the sea <laughs> and some red light therapy yeah. and all the rest of it but um yeah, I've kind of ended up here because um, I was offered the opportunity in, in July when they opened. It's all brand new here. Um, and I thought, why not after the pandemic that we've been okay. through and, and me specifically with, um, as, as, as I come to, you know, a really rough ride with health. Um, I thought, why not? And it's it's been an interesting ride. And, you know, we know from your discussions, from, you know, a lot of discussions that are going on in the health field at the moment that, our environment is key to health and I could mm. see myself getting sucked into the London smog and cycling around and the pollution and stress and getting back late and having a glass of wine to wind down and it was just it just became I wasn't practicing what I was preaching and um, yeah so now I'm, I'm much more about you know what can we do to bring health into our environment um, yeah. and then and then create longevity through that so but, that, that, that's the second part of the piece but the first part of the piece is you had long cut and you're so healthy I mean your your twitter nickname is sporty doc and yet you yeah. got struck down by this post-viral long covid really bad didn't you yeah and I was you know I was one of the first ones to talk out about this openly on social media because I think there was a there was some shaming of people and I think amongst some people like only unhealthy people get sick with COVID and I got sick right at the start you know the first before lockdown before any of that like sort of first week of March 
Um, and I was just, you know, I was unlucky. There were a few things that were going on. I got a big viral load. My daughter kissed me on the lips, coughed right down into my throat. And then I had four people come back from a skiing and I was doing infusions with them and they were all coughing and they all had COVID. So I think my body just had a massive viral yeah. load. Um, and I know that because it, it, my PCR was still was positive four weeks after initial infection, which was, oh, you know, I just couldn't God. clear it. And, <laughs> and I think this is, this is what people don't understand about COVID. They think like, oh, he, you know, so-and-so down the street, you know, got COVID and was absolutely fine. It was like a cold. But, you know, it, a viral load determines your immune response, which then determines how much collateral damage happens. And a big part of, um, big part of long COVID is collateral damage. It isn't the virus itself. It's what the virus does in the body. And that is triggering autoimmunity, triggering clotting. We know there's a lot around that at the moment, triggering your own body to you know, produce clots, to get sluggish blood, to not be able to deliver oxygen around the blood properly. But you know, when I had this, and when I started speaking up about it on Instagram, I was like, this is really weird. You know, I'm a former endurance athlete. Yes, I'm a bit stressed out. Yes, I work too much. Yes, I probably, you know, teeter on the edge of, you know, what we should be allowed with our alcohol intake as according to the government per week. But, you know, I was still running. I was, you know, I did, as we were probably relevant to you as well. I, I was living in a moldy house, so I had some degree oh. of immune dysfunction. Yeah. Had to get out of that. Um, I'd also had, so, you know, my mycotoxins when I did my urine test were through the roof, um, despite endless sauna sessions. So there were things that were going on. And I think we'll come to that because my demographic, this age group, you know, I'm 42 mm. now, um, it, you know, that that kind of stress, perimenopause, female is very prone to developing autoimmune disease. And long COVID is in part an autoimmune disease. Um, and so there's lots of people like me who have succumbed long term with fatigue and all the other issues that I've mentioned. So, yeah, I mean, it was a bumpy ride and, and, and more so then because we didn't know anything. I was in I escaped to Devon when when I heard that we were going to lock down. So I was in this little country house where I used to grow up in Devon with my daughter and my au pair. And um, I was sending, taking my own blood and sending it up to London on, you know, curing it because we couldn't even get a test then. But I knew yeah. something was wrong. I remember putting an Instagram post. My aura, my aura ring was like 50 and my body temperature was sky high. My heart rate was sky high. So I knew something was I was like, this isn't the flu. This feels really different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was in and out of hospital. You know, I, there were times when I couldn't breathe. Um, I felt completely saturated, suffocated. I had what we now know to be the cytokine storm at day seven, which is where your body goes, oh, my God, all of a sudden it sees all this virus and goes, I need to drop some bombs. So it starts throwing out all these bombs, which is essentially cytokines, which are inflammatory mediators. And that causes joint inflammation. It causes widespread inflammation in the body, which then over time creates problems, right? It creates um, inflammation is a key driver of many chronic problems. Also blood clots, um, thick blood, all of those things. But they didn't know what to do with us, to be honest. And, and they are knowing a bit more about long COVID now and, and the sequelae and also how to treat acute COVID a bit more. But, you know, it was, it was a terrifying time and I was forced to do a lot of... yeah mental introspective work because my body felt not my own anymore mm. and yeah touch and go yeah um, yeah but- I mean I was, I'm so sorry to, it's, it's really obviously I mean I can't remember how much I told you when we first met but the reason I set up this podcast is because I had this post viral sort of syndrome and it turns out there's loads of viruses that are, especially in sort of developing parts of the world that haven't been mapped by doctors they, they can tell you've got some sort of something post-viral going on but they can't tell what it is mm. and I you know it was thankfully it wasn't as bad as yours but I empathize so much because I think that especially if you are someone who is for want of a better phrase type a you know, mm. I know you've got a lot going on in terms and you've always got loads <laughs> of projects and I have too, and I'm sort of very driven. And I think sometimes as much as the post viral uh, effects going on, it sort of tips you over the edge, doesn't it? There's, a, there's mm. definitely an adrenaline and a cortisol thing going on as well. Mm. And, and then it becomes very mental too. I mean, it was, it was, I found it very hard to deal with mentally and emotionally. It took me a, at least a full year to get back on my feet and, a few years to get fully back on my feet. And I suppose I was, I was never quite the same afterwards, but no. how are you, I, mean, I know inflammation is something that I really suffered with afterwards. Is that something that's sort of still going on for you now? 
Um, yes, and I think, you know, if there's one positive to come from this whole pandemic, it's that our approach to be able to recognize and treat post-viral illness and chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, is going to yes. be, you know, revolutionized eventually, because we now rec- we recognize that this is systems operational failure, right? It's yeah. not a thing. It's a system that goes, various things stop working, and then that presents as symptoms, which then present as fatigue. So if we look at the underlying drivers to that, like inflammation, like mitochondrial dysfunction, like gut health, like sleep, sleep dysfunction, like cortisol and adrenaline, this stress hormone dysregulation, then you can over time get better. But if you're looking for a panacea, if you're looking for a cure, we don't find it, which is why, you know, we, this is why for the, this functional medicine, this operating system of health is really going to come to the fore. So yes. if you ask about me, I think, you know, for a long time I had, so I had persistent lung damage. They, they found I had widespread inflammation three months after initial infection in the lungs, which was surprising to me because I'd never had a lung problem in my life. You know, I had a really high VO2 max as an endurance athlete. So I still have a, an area of collapse in my left lung. And when I get run down, that flares up and I have to take antibiotics. They now want to go in with a, a bronchoscope and have a little look down and sort of hose it out to kind of clean it. And I've put that off because it sounds horrendous. Um, and I'm, to be honest, kind of escaped from that medical world, you know, because yeah. it's traumatic, quite frankly, going in and out of hospital. And I've yes. learned a lot being on that side of the fence. Um, mm, have you? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it will very much inform the way that you treat your patients in the future and your patients will benefit from what you've gone through. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think I, I used to have this sort of TTFU attitude, um, which my coach used to imbue on me, which is, sorry, let me turn that off. What is what's um, TTFU? <laughs> toughen the F up. Um, yeah 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 I know just get out there just do it (laughs) yeah and it's not always it's do you know what you need to do you need to write a book on long COVID and I know just the man to publish it for you (laughs) (laughs) there we go I mean no seriously that because all of this you know I've got other friends who've suffered from it to varying degrees and it's just an, an incessant search for information and it sounds to me that with your experience and your background and your knowledge of the sort of biohacking functional medicine space, as well as conventional medicine, you Mm. could offer something really valuable to people. And I suppose that's also what you're doing in IB for that. Yeah. I've had a lot of long COVID people contact me and I've produced some sort of online free content as well. Done lots of, you know, Instagrams on it, but you're right. A book book is something I was in collaboration with Jez Medinger. I don't know if you know him. He did his, uh, he's a long COVID guy and, former engineer he's doing a lot of stuff but you're right you you know I instead of doing individual consultations it makes much more sense to to actually get this this information out there but um you know I do have residual inflammation I uh I couldn't run like I literally if you'd have asked me like six months ago even when I moved when I came to about Ibiza in July you know if I ran my my knees it jogged my knees would flare up I'd feel like they were kind of broken it was really weird Mm. I'd get wrist and you know inf- inflammation in my wrists and my um, um and my finger joints all of that but you know when we did the tests and we did the autoimmune screens it was always kind of not really anything there they couldn't really measure it but if you look deeper if you do some white you know infl- inflammation marker screens cytokines yeah. interleukins so these are expensive tests that people don't know but they yeah. were all out of range you know it was horrible i did an inflammaging test with chronomics, which showed me how much I accelerated my age, my right. biological That's age. That's pretty terrifying, isn't it? It was literally like four years in a year that I'd aged, right. which wasn't as bad as some, but, you know, it was pretty bad. And if you imagine how many how many things I've thrown at this, from infrared yeah. saunas to nutrition to gut health to hyperbaric oxygen to... So the thing that really helped me the most, I think, more recently, not just moving to Ibiza and being in the sea all summer, that really helped. You know, breath work really helps. I've done a ton of breath work, not just for my lungs, but also for dysautonomia, which is essentially nervous system dysfunction, which happens when your body goes into some kind of state of shock or trauma. And that happens with a lot of illness. So you don't breathe properly. Your heart rate variability goes right down. So breath work has been really helpful, and I've done a lot of that here. Um, also infrared sauna. I think a lot of people have heat intolerance with long COVID. Um, so I think start very low. People seem to think that saunas are all super hot. 
as you know, not all of them are super hot. You can go start yeah. low, but the infrared um, really can support mitochondrial function. Therefore, you feel better. You have more endorphins. But the problem is, if you're inflamed and you're tired, you don't want to move. If you don't move, you get stuck in this vicious cycle yes. of low mood. Yeah. So yeah. simple things like light, you know, one of the reasons I just love light, having light. Oh, um, lovely, yeah. You know, um, but I started on something called low dose naltrexone. I don't know if you've done any work with it. No. Low dose naltrexone. I've never heard of it. Oh, right. It's used in functional medicine quite quite a lot for autoimmunity specifically. I first learned about it through um, Chris Cresser. Do you know him? Oh, I love Chris Cresser. Yeah, I think he's very good. Yeah, he's. I mean, he. I've known him for many years, and he kind of started one of the people that started me on this journey. And he had fatigue issues as well at one point, didn't he? Lyme, fatigue, yeah, all of the, all of that. Um, but low dose nitrogen is is used to modify the immune system response and therefore reduce inflammation. Now, trexone is a drug in its full dose, which is used for alcoholism to reduce the um, uh, the, indul- the, the the sort of reward feeling that you get from drinking, and therefore you, it's meant to negatively feedback that you know alcohol's rubbish. Doesn't much change how I feel. Right. But in low doses it seems to modify the immune response. So since starting that, I have now been able to run slowly again. That's so great. jog. Yeah. I wouldn't say run. I, you know, I was looking at, I was thinking the other day when I was having a run, I was running like a you know, nine and a half minute mile. And I remember thinking I ran a 6.43 mi- per mile for a whole marathon once. <laughs> I was wow. thinking, this yeah. is, it's so far what, away. What time does that translate to on a whole marathon then? I think it was even slightly less than that. I think it was about, it was 2.53, yeah, in London. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Like sort of inflammation-wise, some people are more prone to it. And you were talking about that. And I was thinking, God, I always get inflamed knees where I, I run. And actually, I've found over the last few years, I've been less inflamed than I've ever been before. And that's mainly getting to grips with methylation, I think. Um, yeah, you talk a lot about methylation. I'm, I, I've tried to work with methylation. I use Sam E a lot. I think you? that really yeah. helped my joints and it helps my mood. Um, like literally, you know, it's like a night switch gone. I can take it twice a day and my mood lifts again. Great. Because, yeah. yeah. I think it's underrated. Um, mm. But low dose of toxin is worth, worth, worth looking at for if there's persistent fatigue and inflammation for sure, because yeah. um, it doesn't really have any side effects. It can make you feel a bit hyper for a few days and then it kind of settles down. Yeah. Wow. But it's so a what journey medication. you've been on? Yeah. Okay. So I need to come to you to get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, made in one place in Scotland, like in the whole, uh, the whole of Europe. You can only, I think, get it in Scotland or Amsterdam or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just interrupting this podcast for one moment to tell you that my podcast partner today is Sensate. This is something that we absolutely love. I even take it on holiday. I travel with it. It is groundbreaking technology all around wellness. And it's best described as a pebble that hangs around your neck, a sort of high tech pebble. It uses the natural power of sonic resonance to calm your body's nervous system, providing immediate relief and long term benefits from regular use. If you're someone who is prone to a little bit of anxiety at times, yeah, that's me, then it will provide instant calm. Here's what it does. Here's what Sensate does. Calms your nerves improves stress resilience and if you are one of the thousands of biohackers who listen to this podcast and wears an Oura ring you'll be interested in the third bit it increases heart rate variability I have definitely seen that and you can even measure that if you use the Oura ring at the same time it is a known biomarker of health and longevity heart rate variability so to improve it is really important it hangs around your neck and syncs up with an app on your phone and you have a lovely little 10 or 20 minute session and relax with the sensate on. It's a very odd sensation when you start using it, but it's brilliant technology and it really is important. And I really do believe that more than ever, we are living very jacked up lives, constantly connected, very switched on. It's hard to unplug. Sensate offers you a little moment of oasis in your day where you can do just that. So I'm really pleased that they're my podcast partners because I've been using it for at least two years, I think, and we still uh, uh, have it and enjoy it. 
You can go to getsensate.com slash Tony Wrighton. That is getsensate.com slash Tony Wrighton. Use the code Tony at checkout for 10% off. And it's one of those ones I highly recommend. So getsensate.com slash Tony Wrighton and use the code Tony at checkout for 10% off. It's a good one, this one. Back to the show. So what a journey. I mean, it, it's have your sort of, how has it affected you? Because I have to say the, the whole experience of going through what I went through, it was so sort of seismic in terms of how I thought about my life. Has it affected, I mean, obviously you've moved to Ibiza, but you're in Ibiza at the moment. There's obviously mm. been a, a huge amount of change. What about mm. your sort of life goals and your ambitions and your daily routine and the way that you, and your values, I suppose, and your beliefs? Uh, do you think it's changed that? It's made me much more aware of the temporal nature of life. You know what I mean? And I think we forget that when we're in our stuff, we forget that, you know, people die every day. And is this really how we want to go? Is is this it? Right. So it's made me much more inquisitive into, into me and, you know, how I live my life. And I was very, as all my friends would tell you, I was very, you know, headstrong and I can do this, I will do this and climbing and moving and achieving. And this has definitely made me feel, um, you know, that I will take some time to, time out to be with my daughter, you know, focus time, friends, building relationships, yeah. you know, in, instead of being hell bent on, you know, writing or doing whatever, achieving productivity. I'm like, I'm going swimming, you know, yes. I'm going for it. I'm going to laze about yeah. that kind of thing. Um, but also just, just on that, just, I, I, I want to come back to, but it, it's the irony is that going swimming will probably help that writing, help your productivity and help and make you feel better as well. <laughs> mm. Won't it? All of that. Yeah. And, and I think it's become, you build these things into your life, right? You know, if we if we have our morning routine, like get up, you have you, you know whatever you drink, you then your coffee, and then you do some exercise, and you have your light, and we build these things into our lives because, and they become necessary, and they build health, right? Mm. Um, my concern is that a lot of people is they 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 think that health comes from is given to you by doctors. You know, it's given to you. you there's something goes wrong, you go to the doctor, they give you something, and you feel better. And you, but slowly, slowly, you move away from you, you may move away from a baseline. You get older, right? I'm in your forty. I'm in my forties, like you, and, yes. and and everything starts to, you know, this is when we start aging, and aging is accumulated cell damage over time. And mm. what you do now really matters. Uh, yeah. You can't get to fifty and then go, oh shit, you know, that's it. I'm de- destined to age. Um, it's really working on these different systems now. Mm. But I think, you know, that people, I've met a lot of very obsessed vegetarian supplement taking slightly unhappy people with, you know, <laughs> slightly damaged relationships that are obsessed with, you know, have to have this money supplement. And, then, and that isn't yeah. health. That isn't longevity. You know, that is, you know, and they, and they then think that they are creating longevity through what they do, but actually not being relaxed, not being fluid, yeah. not being, if you look at the people that age and, and and live well those are the people that we should be studying and emulating absolutely and and as a parent i suppose you know that as well i mean one of the things we talk about a lot having a two-year-old who obviously loves ice cream and would just eat that breakfast lunch and dinner if you wanted that you know we try and get some good food to into him but we're not religious about denying him the pleasures of life like ice cream and cupcakes if they come along because really we just feel that's a much better way to a sort of a balanced life and a balanced sort of emotions around food as well and and that's it's probably the same for adults too isn't it I think I think it is so you, you you build in a sort of tolerance you know our bodies are very forgiving if you do what you do 80 percent of the time matters you know we are we can forgive the 20 percent of, of of crap if you build a healthy system to tolerate you know crap yeah yeah <laughs> um, it, it, it's healthier you know? than than uh, being so religious mm. about sort of a hundred percent of the time having the, the the vegan whatever it is that you're actually sort of um you're you're stressed about about when mm. it just goes slightly out of whack or when something isn't quite right i mean stress and stress parenting has a lot to uh, you know can cause a lot of damage you know stress yeah. is blood vessels you know contract your nervous system contracts your posture goes under your digestion suffers you know so 
there's much to be said for that uh, that more liberal way yeah. of of being. Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, it's, it's the 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 stress thing as well. I know you've been very interested in histamine intolerance, which is something that I discovered a few years ago, and it's just made a huge difference to my life. And and I and I know the links between stress and histamine intolerance, and histamine intolerance and stress, and the emerging body of research and science that suggests that is a real thing. Mm. And we, we went to Cyprus in October and my heart rate variability was you mentioned the aura ring earlier on that was the highest it's ever been it was just wonderful and, and it's not as high now <laughs> but I can't live in Cyprus all the time I mean I suppose I probably could but um it's just uh I would love to sort of get my HRV up there all the time and really look after myself but I, it's not necessarily practical just to be on holiday all the time is it no, but I do think that those periods where you do check in, sort of plug in and, you know, reboot can, yes. you know, give you a yeah. systems upgrade that lasts and then till the next check in and reboot and upgrade, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it's worth, you know, having that insight into how your body works and, and, and heart rate variability and what, what impacts it. I think what I've noticed it, it, incredibly is breath work for sure. That mm. when I was using hyperbaric oxygen chambers to help long COVID, when I do a moment with the aura ring in there, my heart rate variability would be 50% higher than if I was just resting, you know, doing the same. So they right. do, it does have a real impact. That's amazing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Actually, I've noticed if I do some um, breath work just before I go to sleep, the first couple of hours of my heart rate variability overnight is just spikes so much. So same sort of thing as what you were talking about there. Mm. Um, the breath work. I wonder if there's something about sort of a long COVID or a sort of a post viral and breath work that is particularly relevant or whether it's just good for everybody. I don't know. I think it's good for everybody, but I think, you know, with long COVID, a lot of people, as I say, develop this dysautonomia, which is an imbalance with the sympathetic, the fight and flight and the rest yeah. and digest. So if you can do specific forms of breath work that activate the vagus nerve, which then will increase heart rate variability, then that, that can only be a good thing. Um, Have you tried the, the other, Sensate? Uh, no, I think I had, I've tried it. I haven't tried it for any length of time, no, yeah. but I hear good feedback from it. No, it's all about the vagus nerve. Yes, exactly. It's a, yeah. it's a stone, isn't it? Yeah, no, it reminded me I should get back in touch with them. Yeah. They were good. Yeah, I've, I've just um, interviewed Stefan on this podcast about it. He was very bullish about the science, about how effective it is. And we, we like it. We, we took it on holiday with us. No, oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll get one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just the whole thing with gadgets. It's just sometimes it's another thing to charge and I rem agree. Re I remember. Know. I found I mean, that about the Muse headband. I liked the idea, but it was just, oh God, where's the Muse? And I've got to sync up the app. And I've got to make sure all the sensors. Yeah. Are, and actually, I could have been meditating for five minutes by the time I put the, the damn thing on and loaded up the yeah. app. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not that I don't like it. I think it's great, but yeah. It, I get it. It's with all of these biohacking therapies. Like, you know, how much time do we have? I, you know, I've hung out with Ben Greenfield for a week and I've seen the way he lives his life. And it's like, whoa. Right. You know, it's intense. Every aspect of his life has a function and purpose. And it's mm. got better now because he realizes that um, after doing a Dutch test, that, you know, he was still getting a lot of high cortisol because it takes. What, six in the evening or something like that? That's where his peak was or something, was it? I think his, his total cortisol over the course of the day was high because, you know, it's actually quite stressful living that life where you have yeah. to do so many things at a certain time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I always think of this from an ancestral perspective um, that we weren't designed to be hooked up and no. monitored and, 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 no. and how are our physiologies catching up? You know, no. I just don't think we're ready for it yet. That's so interesting you say that because um, – Another interesting sort of anomaly I found last year, we had a, this sort of mad lockdown Christmas. I'm sure you remember. Mm. It was just the three of us in the house eating sort of, you know, like turkey portions for dinner every, every for four days and, and mince pies. <laughs> and my heart rate variability was very, very good, even though the diet wasn't. But of course, mm. it was relaxing. It was just sort of, you know, not, not adhering to the strict regimes of daily life, daily life. And the Ura was the one giving me that information. Have you got the new Ura ring? I do. I've got this gold one here. Yeah. What do you think? I've got I've got one as well. I've got the new one. And I think I'm going to unpair it and put the, the old one back on because I don't like the green light at night. 
No, the green light is nuts. I, I mean, you can just put it on airplane mode overnight. You can, but it's the green light still shines. It shouldn't do. Oh, no, I guess it has to to measure your heart rate accurately. Well, yeah. in the past, they only used infrared light. I think it's sort of almost a glitch that they've built. They need to, I'm sure they could sort it out. And I've contacted the company about it. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be going to bed and I sort of tend to sleep like that. And it's like a fireworks show in front of my eyes. I just, it's just wow. a disaster. Yeah, no, that, that really, that's not good. That's one of the reasons I don't like wearing the Apple Watch and I definitely wouldn't wear it overnight. No, um, no. But I just, don't, I just don't know. And I contacted them yesterday as well because I'm like, what is this doing differently from the other one? And they're like, well, these are the things. And like, yeah. I don't, I don't think it was worth another 370 quid or whatever. It's, it's not, <laughs> is it? I mean, no. it's, it's actually... Yeah, it's actually not that as, as good as I uh, thought it was going to be, but um, it would be better if the, if it wasn't doing the opposite of the one thing that they claim to do, which is improving my sleep. It's actually wrecking it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, there's enough research around bright light and sleep at night, isn't there? I mean, it's just, it's fairly basic. That's fairly basic, yeah. but also it's, you know, it's to some degree it's EMF, isn't it? And that's affecting us more than we probably know. Who knows? Yes, the EMF is an interesting one because um, you would hope with EMF that if it's in airplane mode, it's not really, it's, it's no. very minimal. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. But then some people, a lot of people don't put it on airplane mode because you then have to reconnect with the charger. To... Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, I'm, I'm yeah. speaking in a second, actually. I'm speaking to a company called Quiet On. I don't know whether you've heard of them. But they have invented these earplugs that basically go into the ear. And as a layman, I'm not going to tell you the science very well, but what it is, is it almost sort of puts in a tone into your ear that cancels out no, it's, it noise. It's unbelievable. Mm. It's really quite impressive. And the big question I've got for them is, what's the EMFs? Because there's no connection. There's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. There is obviously some sort of, because they've got a charge on them. There's some mm. sort of EMF. It's just how big. But... Um, but I find if my son is up very early and my wife is on looking after him duty, I can put them in. I won't hear a thing. <laughs> no, that would be great. great. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oblivion. Yeah, oblivion. Oblivion. That's just what I'm going for this Christmas. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's, it's a tough time when they're little, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's incredible and it is challenging as well. How old is, is yours? Six and a half now. Yeah, Six and a half. Okay. So so um, you're just out of that zone. Oh, it must, mm. be, oh, it must be lovely. <laughs> as soon as they can get themselves up in the morning and dress and entertain themselves if you want to lie, and that's, that's yes. a game changer. That's great. That's <laughs> great. That is the that is a game changer. Well, Tam, it's so good to talk to you again. Yeah. Um, something I asked you before is what is one book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy? Mm. It can be any book that's had an impact, could be fiction or nonfiction, something recent mm. or something that you read years ago. What would be a book that you would recommend? Um, I really like Atomic Habits. I don't know if you've mentioned that I read before. It. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved it though. So please tell me why you liked it. I just I, I like the way it chunks out. It, it's quite simple. It works with CBT principles. It's... Um, it's a good way of chunking out information and, and getting you to, you know, think about the way you live your day and being more productive because, you know, we do amble through life being quite unproductive and then get stressed about the unproductivity. Um, <clears throat> so I do like the way he, he approaches that there. So I, I'm a much, because I, I'm terrible. Once the time I get into bed, I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gone, but I do listen to, you know, I listen to books quite a lot more. Um, I well, did like, I was listening to, um, what's he called, Surrender, uh, Michael Sanger. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. He wrote, nice. it's a bit more spiritual. He wrote a book called um, Surrender and also, I'm trying to think of the other one. It was something to do with, I don't know, the, the power of belief or something like that. Anyway, it was, it was a lot more spiritual. I think being in Ibiza and doing a lot more breath work, you know, a couple of psilocybin journeys you become a lot more aware of um, a different consciousness as it were. Oh, that sounds like so, a whole different podcast. Fantastic. Well, that's a different one. Yeah. But um, yeah. I've been very following, very much following the psychedelic research and psychedelic um, uh, mental health um, 
work. So yes, yeah. uh, you know, someone with a background in psychiatry, I've been fascinated by that. So thinking a bit more about spirituality, um, Michael Sanger, a- S-A-N-G-E, he's written a couple, quite a few books but um looking a bit more was like this whole idea of faith and surrender and as opposed to achieving and going and it's a bit more about connecting with your with yourself and manifesting has become the the, the buzzword but yeah. that comes through meditation it comes through you know inner self-work as well so is that is that the tip as well then i think i think we we all have a lot of trauma whatever that is it's different things to different people and we have layers of it and i think that impacts our nervous system functioning on a day-to-day it, it impacts how we interact with others it interacts with our relationships and i think sometimes people just ignore that and just carry it and i think sometimes you know chronic illness or, or other things you know, other acute illness or injury you know forces us to really delve into that a bit more and um I call it derobing, sort of psychological derobing, um, and just just being okay with yourself. And a lot of people are really not okay with themselves, so which is why they accumulate stuff and, and comparisons and, and low self esteem. So I think that kind of work is is important, and I've been doing a lot of that work and encouraging other people to do the same here. Yeah. Well, lovely to talk <laughs> to you again. Um, where can people find out more about you and also that where that beautiful place where you are right now? So, yeah, I'm at Six Senses in Ibiza, uh, which is a, is a global sort of wellness, uh, wellness resort. They have quite a few around the world, but um, where the first longevity centre is going to be based here. Um, we close in January, but we're open again in March. Um, Great. And then other, and I still have my practice in London. I go back and forth called Well Jevity. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram as Sporty Doc. You mentioned that earlier yeah. with an IE, Sporty. I don't know why I did that, but there we go. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and, um, yes, I like, and your Instagram, I, I like your Instagram and your Twitter a lot. And I've been following your Twitter for years. So, well, look, it's, it's great to talk and, and good luck with the continued recovery. And I, I, I've sort of made loads of notes as we've talked. So thank you. It's, it's really been great to chat. Yeah, likewise. Let's share, share the love. That is it for Dr. Townsend Lewis and thank you for listening to Zestology. Next week on Zestology, one of our friends of the show, Dr. Carolyn Dean, who I think was on episode five, the world's foremost expert on magnesium supplementation. She also specializes in immune support and lives in the perfect location to help with that. I mean, this week we're in Ibiza, next week is is possibly even better than Ibiza. it's still very windy here, so I hope you can hear me all right and it's, it's not too disruptive to the recording equipment. Um, so that's coming next week. Before I go, this podcast is brought to you by Sensate, the palm-sized pebble that emits infrasonic vibrations to tone the vagus nerve and improve overall well-being. I love the Sensate. I use it regularly. You can use the code TONY to get a chunk of change off if you go to getsensate.com slash Tony Wrighton. So go to the Sensate side, use the code Tony, and you get quite a bit off. I think it's about £20 or $25 off. Um, It's next generation wellness tech, and it can help you calm your fight, flight, or freeze response. Do let me know how you get on with it as well. And Sensate have now, they're definitely uh, partnering up with us on the podcast next month as well and I've been chatting to them about what we can do to make it a bit different and I'm hoping to run some sort of quite subjective but fun research project around the sensei on a podcast which could be quite fun and I'm hoping that means we can give some away as well which could be great so if that appeals to you go to getsensate.com slash Tony Wrighton check it out use the code Tony for £20 about $25 off I think it is and let me know how you get on. Next week, it's Dr. Carolyn Dean. Until then, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.